is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are San Diego. Last night, the omnipotent Chicago Cubs used the home run ball. Addison Russell, Chris Bryant, and Jason Hayward, three shots out of the yard on their way to a 5-1 to one victory over the San Diego Padres. And we welcome you to game two of this three-game series with Mark Grant, Dick Enberger. Pleased that you're with us. And the Chicago team, the reason they're the winningest team is not because they score a lot of runs and hit home runs. They've got great pitching, too, and we're going to focus on that tonight. Jake Arrieta is on the hill for the Cubs. And if you saw those home runs hit by the Cubs yesterday, they were all mistakes out of the hand of Edwin Jackson. Well, Jake Arrieta is a pitcher that throws a few mistakes, but recently, as you first look at his 14 starts, 11-2, very well easily on his way to be a 20-game winner like he was last year. Hitting his spots, putting the hitters on the defensive. He's got a no-hitter in there. Why? Because he can really dissect the plate and throw the ball off the plate when he wants when he's got two strikes. But recently... Yeah, how about this? He's 4-3 and three of late. And it, Dick, it just goes to prove it. If you throw 98 or 88, if you don't hit your spots, even guys, even pitchers like Jake Arrieta are going to suffer. Over 4.5 ERA, three quality starts, 4-3 and three record, not the same Jake Arrieta. So what does it go to? Edwin Jackson made mistakes. The Cubs capitalize. That's what they have to do tonight. Jake Arrieta to make a mistake, capitalize on it, maybe hit a home run or two tonight on the Padres' end. And you got to remember, too, that this Cubs team, they, don't, they never score less than yeah. three runs, so you're going to have to find a way to manufacture a lead. Christian Friedrich is on the mound, the left-hander, and it could be his last start. It could be. He has approached innings to where he hasn't been before. You see back in 2012 with the Rockies, 84 and two-thirds, so uncharted territory for the left-hander. So what's the big key? Tonight, get ahead. Avoid the 2-1 count. And we've seen him when he's making good pitches. He puts hitters on the defensive as well. The breaky ball down. I'll tell you what, all about getting strike one. In fact, that's what Joe Madden talks about Jake Arrieta. He's got to get strike one, even the great ones. So that's what Christian Friedrich has to Had do Had a good outing in uh, Tampa Bay. Went almost a full seven. Gave up only a couple of runs. Well, Addison Russell, he's only 22 years old. And this shortstop for the Chicago Cubs is something very special. Uh, He's uh, perhaps with the name Addison. He was bound to be a Cub. And is Joe Madden ever happy he is? Julie Alexandria next with a Cub skipper.
Welcome back to Petco. Well, last night, an impressive show by Cubs shortstop Addison Russell, hitting his 18th home run on the season. And that was just the offense. Let's talk defense. This incredible 6-3 stop for the out of Will Myers. Well, nobody was more impressed than his manager, Joe Madden, and we had a chance to chat about it today. And one thing he said that stuck out to him, his practice is precise. Today, the Cubs did not take BP, but of course, Addison Russell was on the field pregame taking ground balls. Here's Joe Madden on his shortstop. His feet are so good, his feet. Everybody always looks at the, you know, the, the whole picture, the whole play, and they look at the waist up all the time. Watch his feet, how he moves his feet. Like Derek Jeter was like that, very simple. Very simple with the feet. Um, uh, very frugal in his movements. There's nothing, there's nothing um, extravagant about how he does any of this. And that's what I love. I love the real simple, too simple, better infielders. His feet are spectacular. That's why his arm is so accurate. Joe Madden, very pleased. And he told me that earlier today, he was walking around the gas lamp district and he strolled into a wine shop, found a bottle of a wine that he thought Addison Russell would like. And as a reward, he purchased it, a bottle of Justin Isosceles. And all he wrote on it, 6-3. And that was his reward. Well, coming up, the Padres taking on the Cubs for game two. Can the Padres break Jake? We'll see when we return. And that ball is gone. Number 18 for the young shortstop. Oh, what a stop by Russell. I say the sky's the limit. Maybe the universe is the limit for this guy. A long run for Sardinius, and he's oh, going to no. make the catch. As a taste of last night's action as the Cubs won 5 to 1, ready for game two as Christian Friedrich leads the Padres onto the field. Another beautiful baseball night here in San Diego. Uh, breeze a little stronger than normal, blowing from the left field corner toward right. Let's check the Cubs lineup brought to you by Hyundai, much like the one used last night by Joe Madden. Dexter Fowler leads it off, then Chris Bryant, Anthony Rizzo, Ben Zobrist in the cleanup spot with Addison Russell hitting fifth. In front of Jason Hayward, they both homered last night. Javier Baez is at second base, played third base last night. A catcher is Wilson Contreras and Jake Arrieta, the pitcher, and we're underway. Fowler, the switch hitter, batting right-handed against Friedrich. 
278 on the season. 0 oh and 2. Friedrich trying to break out of 0 uh, for 7. Rut and it's not all his four fault. He's not uh, received a lot of support. His last seven decisions have gone 0 and 7. Ground ball up the middle. There's the first chance to see Sardinius and pretty slick there. One away. Well, according to plan right now for Christian Friedrich, it looked pretty nice getting ahead and getting the quick out. Scott report for the left-hander from the Chicagoland area. Command both sides early and curveball anytime. And if Christian Friedrich can do that, he's going to have a good night in the big leagues. Christian Bethencourt behind the plate. Nick Lentz is the umpire calling the balls and strikes with Mark Ripperger, Joe West, the crew chief, and Kerwin Danley on the bases. Chris Bryant homered last night, number 32, to match Nolan Arenado of the Colorado Rockies atop the NL Home Run Derby. A tick under 300 for Bryant, former USD Torero. 55 footer, 2 0. And with the home run, Bryant scoring his 100th run. He leads the National League by plenty in runs scored. 100 already for Bryant. 2 0. Outside. You know, the home runs last night that the Cubs hit, you look at those pitches, they were right down the middle. They were mistakes. And you cannot do that against this lineup. And there's the breakdown in the NL for home runs. Arenado hit one tonight, so he now is back on top. And a four pitch walk to Bryant. Here's the defense behind Friedrich, brought to you by your San Diego County Ford dealers. Phil Lehan in right field with Jankowski and Dickerson in center and left on the infield, Solarte Sardinius. Second baseman is Schimpf. First baseman is Will Myers. Bethencourt behind the plate for Friedrich. And here's Anthony Rizzo. Four hits last night. Raises his average up to 301. That's the Cubs best. Leads in RBIs with 87. Three more than Bryant, who's on first base. You know, an interesting little nugget prior to last night's game, before last night's game, Padre pitching staff pitching very well to Bryant and Rizzo in the limited at bats. Rizzo right around 200 average. Chris Bryant below 200. So they got to bounce back tonight, make some good pitches. Low and away, and it's one and one. Well, we have bad news for the Little League fans here in the San Diego area. The Chula Vista team was defeated by the Tennessee entry into the Little League World Series. Four to two in extra innings tonight. So the kids from Chula Vista will be heading home. One ball, one strike to Rizzo. Leads the National League in two base hits with 37. He's chipped in with four triples as well to go with his 25 homers. And walks 62 times, ninth in the National League. So his on base percentage is at 399. Tough out. Crowds the plate. Dares you to throw inside. You throw it on the outside corner, and that's like throwing right down the middle with that stance. See how he's got his toes right on the back line and a toe on the inside line. Right field hit well, but not that well. Kilvahan makes the catch, and there's two away. Well, he got ahead of Dexter Fowler 0 and 2 and let's go pitch by pitch lefty on lefty the fastball for a strike. There's the breaking ball fishing biting. OK now one and two it's exactly where Christian wants to be. Breaking ball and Anthony may be a little bit too quick to that baseball. To right field. As he did last night you see with two strikes on him he choked well up on the bat. Kilvahan takes care of his fly ball. Two gone. Ben Zobris, the left fielder, steps in, hitting 278. Ah! 
14 home runs for the former Tampa Bay Ray. This is low and inside. Well, one thing for sure, I've noticed early on in the 13 pitch effort for Friedrich, he's being very aggressive around the zone. He's not trying to nitpick. Line drive, base hit. Over to cut it off Dickerson, play it in, and that will hold Bryant at second base. So two on with two out here in the Cubs first inning and here's that shortstop Addison Russell. Well oh, with the exception of Chris Bryant looked like pretty much a uh, trying to hit the corners with the walk that breaking ball and Zobris does a fine job soft breaking ball lefty into the righty speeds up his bat and that's very inviting for the veteran Chicago Cup. Not the worst fake two outs and now a force at any base. Russell homered his first time up last night. Now has 18 homers and 80 runs batted in this season. The 80 runs batted in most by any National League shortstop. And again, he's only 22. There are the shortstops in the NL Russell with 80, Brandon Crawford, Trevor Story, Corey Seager. Well, that's a terrific lineup, but Edison leads the list. Six game hitting streak for the shortstop fouls that one back. We were, we were asking uh, about Addison Russell were his parents Cubs fans because isn't it Wrigley Fields address is Addison isn't it 1060 West Addison. But apparently that's not the case it's very it's just a coincidental yeah. that this kid should wind up playing his uh, first name is the address. Now they're looking for a kid named Waveland Sheffield <laughs> and Clark. There you go. The other <laughs> streets that bound. Uh, Wrigley Field fly ball in comes Kilbahan to make the catch no damage done Cubs leave two. Padres will start it with Travis Jankowski. Presents Padres Baseball brought to you by Buick by Petco, your complete pet store, by Kona Brewing Company. Enjoy a long board lager or big wave golden ale tonight, and by SeaWorld. Enter tonight's keyword polar bear on the ways to win page at FoxSportsSanDiego.com. And a look at the Padres lineup brought to you by Toyota with Travis Janskowski starting things, then Will Myers. Jan Salarte hitting third, 285, the best Padres batting average. Alex Dickerson in the cleanup spot. Ryan Schimpf hits fifth, then Bethancourt in front of Patrick Kivlahan. Luis Sardinius will hit eighth, uh, the new shortstop, and Friedrich Knight. Against Jake Arrieta, the 
reigning Cy Young Award winner. His first pitch at 93. Jankowski in August hitting a solid 333. High again, 2 and 0. Arietta tied with Steven Strasburg most wins in the National League, 15. He's 15 and 5. And hitters are batting only 187 against him. That's the toughest in the league to hit. And he falls behind 3 and 0. Got to show some patience. He's 30 now. Plano, Texas. That's a strike. Took a little off, or it seemed he did, but it still was 93 on the fastball. Jankowski has reached safely 21 consecutive games. That's what you want from a leadoff man. And he takes strike two. All two seamers up to this point as Arietta works his way back to full count. That's low ball four. What a great plate appearance by Travis. Well as Dick mentioned the 30 year old making his 25th start for the Cubs he pretty much throws all four that cutter and slider are a big key to his success works both sides of the plate and he kind of throws across his body a little bit he got a little herky jerky motion to throw in a little deception as well About 91 to 97 on the fastball 153 innings 152 strikeouts for. Arietta, so he can help himself out in a tough jam by coming up with a strikeout pitch. Will Myers, speaking of strikeouts, has been in a slump in that regard. He's now has been punched out 124 times. That matches his hit total. 124 hits leads the Padres. 124 strikeouts, also the most. He's due to break out. It's been tough since the All-Star break. Since uh, the All Star break, he's hit only four home runs, knocked in only 21. You see the totals, most of those accumulated before the All Star hiatus. Yeah, you know what's great as we take a look at the numbers for Travis Jankowski and most consecutive games reaching base safely. Yeah, leadoff guy, that's what you need to do. 22 for the kid they call Freddie. Up high, one and one. But Will Myers, he has not changed his act one iota. I mean, he can be hitting 380 during a span. He could be hitting 180. And Will is that kid who wants to be in that position to try to make a difference in the game. That's how he approaches each at bat. One one pitch. Mm, pretty good pitch, but just off the outside edge. With Jan Salarte waiting his turn. These Cubs are just ripping things up in August. They're 16 and 4, and that's with two losses over the weekend in Colorado. They started August 10 and 0. Outside. So far, Nick Lentz is a little tighter strike zone than the one we've seen last night. Well, what the Padre need is one mistake over the heart of the plate. Possibly Will Myers do some damage. Trying to run back that two seamer down and away to the big right handed hitter. Chop to third. Bryant can't make the play at second and does get Myers at first. Had trouble making the exchange out of his glove and with the speed of Jankowski, Bryant, the wiser move was to go across the diamond and get the sure out. Defensively, here are the Cubs. With Zobrist in left, Fowler in center, and Hayward there in right field. On the infield, you just saw Bryant make the play on the ground up by Myers. Or Russell, a shortstop, with Baez at second, and there's former Padre Anthony Rizzo at first base. And we see Contreras, Wilson Contreras, for the first time in the series. Behind the plate for Jake Arrieta. Solarte, runner goes, the throw to third, not in time. Jankowski pilfers third. Number 28 for Jankowski, who is the fourth best base dealer in the National League. 
And that's a shocker. Travis Jankowski has got his uniform all dirty. <laughs> Arietta looks once, kicks, fires, and he is off and running. And when Travis steals a base, the Padres are 18 and 5. That's a good sign. Now get him in. Infield does come in for Solarte and a swing and a miss, one and one. Ryan and Russell on the left side, Baez and Rizzo at second and first will try to cut off the run at the plate. Solarte trying to lift one over them or drive one through them and give the Padres a one nothing advantage. Pulled the first foul. Padres last night in losing five to one had their chances were 0 for 11 with runners in scoring position. See what Arietta did right there on that last pitch. He's not afraid to bury that fastball inside. Infield in that runner at third. You, you cannot be afraid to do that. There's the throw to third, and they get him. Oh, Another out at third base made by the Padres. There were two last night. Ouch. What a throw by Contreras. And with that front door open at the plate, you got the left handed hitting Solarte. As soon, you know, he was set up way outside, and Travis cannot get the hand in safely. Ouch. That's a big time ouch. And you just know now that Solarte will hit a fly ball. <laughs> we'll see. Two and two the count. No? He takes strike three. And the Padres, just when it looked very bright, are out of the inning. In Travis's sense, like, if you don't allow somebody to take the risks at this point in time in their career, they don't take the next step forward in stealing bases. So, like, do we like the way that turned out? Absolutely not. But we're also in a situation where over the last three or four games we faced left-handed pitchers, look at Smiley, look at Snell, look at Robbie Ray, we've essentially mustered zero offense. Uh, the need to, like, get into scoring position, take some sort of risk to get to third base, like, I was cool with the risk. Uh, it's just the execution and the timing of the way we did it wasn't right. Well, perfect example right there. Travis Jankowski thrown out at third for the second night in a row. I asked Travis how he's dealing with this whole learning experience, and he said, I give myself 10 minutes to process, and I move on. Andy Green also added that one of his best attributes is that he's got a great sense of humor and the ability to laugh at himself. Pair that with a short-term memory, and, well, he's able to move on. Guys? All right, Julie. It's a lot like cornerbacks in football. You know, you've got to be aggressive. You cover your man. If you get burned for a touchdown, yep. you know you got about five seconds. Forget it because the next play is coming at yep. you. That's a good attitude. Shift on for Jason Hayward. 
And you know what, you, you can even elaborate on that because there are people out there that look at maybe a Travis Jankowski and he's not kicking, fighting, scratching, throwing water, and, and they think, oh, you know what, he doesn't care. That's not the case. There, there are people who think that. Really? That you have to break, oh yeah. You don't think there's people out there that don't think because you're throwing your glove or you're breaking a bat or you're throwing your helmet in the dugout. When players don't do that, they process it like Julie said. They forget about. They care. Yeah, of course. My he point does. is, you don't have to do that to show people you care. This kid cares. Jankowski cares. He knows he knows he's messed up. But in this game of baseball, you have to forget about it and go on. It's not that they don't care. They do. Play tonight. It's just a matter. He was trying to take a big lead so he could score on a soft ground ball. I did have issue with last night with one, two outs to try yeah. to steal third. The risk and reward there. There's not enough reward for the risk, and he was thrown out. Shot to the shift that goes to Shims, and out is Javier Baez. Julie. You want to add something to that, I know. Well, absolutely. And Mud, you have a great point there. It's not that he doesn't care. I, Travis told me, he said, the one thing that really stings, he said, errors. He said, those ones stick with me. He's like, the rest I can get over. It gives me about yeah, 10 minutes. I think about it. It annoys, but then he can let it go. He said, the mm -hmm. one important thing, he doesn't want the defense to upset the offense or the offense to upset the defense. So he said, I give myself that time. Next half inning, clean slate. Chan Kowski doesn't have to worry about many errors. He's committed one all season. And he's made so many outstanding plays out there in center field. Wilson Contreras having a nice season at 264 with seven home runs. Miguel Montero, the Left handed hitting catcher from Arizona hasn't seen a lot of action this year. You know, the veteran uh, Ross who caught last night, David Ross, and all the pitchers uh, battle to have him behind the plate because he's such a good receiver in the, in the caller of the game. And Contreras now with his bat has moved ahead of uh, Montero. And he's called back, three and one. Well, one thing tonight for sure, Nick Lance, the home plate umpire, he's calling the high strike. He's calling it both ways. Very consistent on that pitch. And Travis turned 24 this season, now three and two. Good change up right there by Christian. Great arm action, great location, down and away. You can't get hurt there. Ripped up the middle of base hit off Joe West who couldn't get out of the way and the carries into left field and here goes Contreras to second base and he's in safely so credit one base to Contreras and another to Joe West couldn't get out of the way yeah if some fans booing and they should a single becomes a double and the umpire just not agile enough to elude the ground ball. Well, this is kind of unfortunate because look at where Jankowski is, right? If that ball is a clean shot, Travis holds him to a single. Now, the rule states that when the umpire's in the outfield beyond the bases, hits the umpire, live baseball. If the umpires are on this side of the line, it's a dead ball, one base. Look how so, long it took him to react. Yeah. And then he walked right into it. Ugly finder. Anyway, so now <laughs> Travis Jankowski can't get to that. I'm kidding. I love Joe West. Yeah. I think he's a darn good umpire. Um, it was just unfortunate. And I, I'm, I guarantee he feels bad about that play. Arietta is a good hitter. 265 average with 13 base hits and a couple of home runs. Yeah, he can help himself here. Two outs. Contreras West double. And the Cubs a chance to take the early lead. High fly ball center field here comes Jankowski. No harm done. Middle of the second. No score.
And have you thought about broadcasting baseball as something after you're tired of uh, being a great star of movies, stage, television, screen, whatever you have? I think when I completely lose my mind here, I'm going to step right up into your spot here in the booth. There's no doubt about you being a Cub, a true Cub fan, is there? Well, I went with the blue and white tonight, figuring I could look like the ground crew in case I got thrown out, I could get back in. <laughs> That was just one of so many memorable moments that Cubs broadcaster the late Harry Carey delivered brought to you by Geico. Harry had invited Bill Murray into the booth during the very first night game ever played at Wrigley Field in August of 1988. Harry spent uh, the last 16 years of his career broadcasting for the Cubs and Bill Murray was last seen applying for a groundskeeper job. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow you. I figure Bill Murray and Joe Madden would get along quite Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Alex Dickerson leading off the Padre second inning, and ah. the count goes one and two. Well, once Jake Arrieta gets that two seam field going and then works in that cutter once in a while, he can be tough to deal with. But he can throw some mistakes over the heart of the plate, and that's where the Padres have to go to Hacken. Soft fly ball that's falling in right for a base hit. Dickerson didn't get it all but he's able to parachute a single to right and the Padres for the second inning have the leadoff man on as we take a look at the keys to the game tonight brought to you by your San Diego Honda dealers hit Arietta's mistakes hey the Cubs hit Edwin Jackson's mistakes they were right down the middle of the plate they hit home runs hoping the Padres can do that against Jake Arietta and also fight for Friedrich give him some offense give the kid a cushion. And the leadoff man Dickerson gets the second inning started on the right foot. Ryan Schimpf with his 14 home runs steps in. Oh, that's a wicked pitch. Yep. Diving away off the outside edge. Ball had wiffle ball action to a two seamer at 93. Schimpf has hit 14 home runs in just 43 games. Take a look at the arsenal for this year 2016 fastball slider curveball changeup. Look at the average on the two seam fastball 050. <laughs> we'll throw that slider and that cutter as well. Hi Papa boy just missed that shallow and right Hayward calling. That was a major league pop up. You know, when you have a, an umpire calling high strikes like tonight, and Arietta can locate, look at this four seamer up in the zone. Ryan Schiff has to protect, can't get on top of it, hence working underneath it, and the fly ball to right for the easy out. Brings up Christian Bethencourt, the catcher. Last five games, hitting at 316, six for 19, average on the year there at 235. Infield set for two behind Arietta. You know, got to keep an eye on his feet. I think sometimes Jake Arietta incorporates the balk move to where he'll move that front foot first rather than step off with his contact foot first to throw to first base. I mean, it's very, very quick. A lot of guys get away with that because they're so quick with their feet. Has a high leg kick. But still is quick to the plate. Mm -hmm. Amazing transformation of this right-hander at Baltimore. He was a losing pitcher. 20 and 25 and then traded to the Cubs and he's been unstoppable. Cy Young unstoppable. And I think the pitch we just saw is one of the reasons. One is Jake Arrieta said himself in an article the command of the fastball. I committed myself to throw the fastball where I wanted it. Work diligently on it. Incorporate the cutter. Expand the zone. There are pitches where you throw close enough to where you can entice the hitter to swing when you're ahead. And that's the ability he has. Last year 22 and 6. ERA 1.77. He edged out Zach Grinke for the Cy Young. Pitching coach Chris Basio having a close eye to Jake Arrieta. 
Ground ball should be two. Oh, Larissa with a bad throw to Baez, and he still turns a double play. 6 4 3, and that's it for the Padres in the second. No score. Brought to you by Ram Trucks. Well, we're going to talk about Luis Sardinas with the San Diego Padres. Look on the ship. First inning last night. He's playing almost behind second base. A long run. Great concentration. Calling it now. you got to deal with the right fielder, Patrick Kiblahan. Thank goodness his feet were up off the ground right there. His, sure, he takes a, a blow to the left elbow, but everybody, after all was said and done, is A-OK. -okay. We see the range of Sardinius at shortstop. Sharp ground ball right to Sardinius on cue. Good throw. One pitch one out as Fowler retired. And that'll bring up Chris Bryant and joining us in our Fox Sports San Diego booth is Rich Hill head baseball coach at the University of San Diego. He uh, knows a little bit about this guy coming <laughs> to the plate Chris Bryant. Yeah. If you could find about five or six more of those coach uh, you'd be a happy man the rest of your life. Oh my gosh Dick that's a, a generational guy we're looking at right there I think uh, certainly in college and probably here in the major leagues. What's up coach and a good kid good too. Man, huh? Oh my gosh the best. He is a prince of a kid isn't he. Unreal I mean in Wikipedia if you look up the phrase too good to be true <laughs> picture of Chris Bryant right there. Yeah. How did how'd you find him in Las Vegas. How did you uh, recruit him to our beautiful city and your great campus. Well we had a great assistant coach at that time Eric Valenzuela who uh, you know was really tied in with the uh, the community out there and the travel ball uh, situation and um, you know we got we got him on campus here and, and his parents are unbelievable as you can imagine Mike and Susie and uh, they fell in love with USD and, and, and everything that USD has to offer not just the baseball program and. Chris committed, uh, you know, as a sophomore. You know, really? back when guys weren't wow. doing that. You know, and uh, we just kept the relationship going, and he just kept getting better, and we were the, the benefactors of that for sure. He was an academic star too. He was terrific in the classroom, I understand. He's a 4.7 out of high school. <laughs> out of a four point <laughs> being all A's. Huh? There's a lot of AP and a lot of everything in there. He's a competitive guy in the classroom too. When did you see something special from uh, Chris Bryant. You know I think right right when he walked on campus our assistant coach Jay Johnson um, you know had said hey man this guy's a real deal and uh, at that time you know, he's six five and all arms and legs and uh, really hadn't grown into his body so um, you know there was some swing and miss and some plate discipline issues but uh oh hit well to left field Dickerson back and gone mm. just a laser into the left field bleachers. Mm. Now we didn't rehearse this folks bring in the coach to have talk about Chris Bryant and have him slug another home run his 33rd of the season and the Cubs lead one nothing. Well there's the home run swing 
Didn't take long for this one to get out of Petco Park. What do you see here, Coach? Well, he's really made a lot of adjustments with his hitting coach, John Malley, there, and his, uh, he's really flattened out his barrel, and you can see how long uh, that it stays into the zone. And uh, he just creates so much leverage with that 6-5 frame, and, and now he's just he's so spread out and so balanced, you can see the compact swing and uh, really gets firm on that front side. And yeah, pretty awesome. He's locked in right now, man. Remember how they tried to pitch him last night? They tried to go up and in on him. That was a forcing fastball up, and you're right. Because he's kind of got, correct me if I'm wrong, Coach, you've seen him more, probably more than anybody in, the, in his college days. Kind of an uppercut swing, right? He sure does. So for, for him to get up on top of that last pitch, that's really making an adjustment. I tell you what, Ted Williams wrote a book about 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. you know, and, <laughs> and, and that thing has come full circle, Mark. And, and his dad, Mike, is a hitting coach in Vegas, and that's what he teaches. Nice stop there by Salarte over on the right side of the infield in the shift and takes a hit away from Anthony Rizzo, two away. Continue your thought, Coach. But Mike teaches that uh, that slight uppercut, you know, in the in the swing. For a while, guys were kind of going back to uh, you know swinging downhill, and you can see that leverage that he creates right on that firm front side. You can see how long that that bat stays in the zone. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that boy, his eyes, his head is steady, and his eyes right down on the contact point. It's an extension of his body. He's uh, he's something special, and the Cubs have. Uh, a whole infield full of stars, and they're all young. You know, he's Robbie's age. How about that, Mark? Is he really? <laughs> and, and when he's the same age as your own son, it's it, it's a little weird. Yeah. And and you kind of go, man, this guy's 24, <laughs> and still just a baby in this thing. And uh, man, he's still, I think, growing into his body. You know, as we speak. It's not too big for him, though, is it? No, he's he's very athletic, and that was really my favorite thing about Chris uh, while he was at USD. Dick is the athleticism. Um, we played him in center field, left, right. Uh, I was the crazy coach that batted him lead off. Really? You know, in college. Yeah. Well, he got up more often. I, tell you, I, I never wanted to have leave uh, end a game with him on deck. Um, you know, pretty soon nobody was ever pitching to him. So I said, well, okay, if you're not going to pitch to him, then we'll lead off a game with him. Huh? You know, uh, and I'm waiting for Joe Madden to bat him lead off at least once. And I bet when they get into an American League, uh, you know, situation, he'll do that sometime in his career. He's already played short. What are some other notable USD Toreros that have made it to the big leagues? I know A.J. Griffin, Brian a Mattis, any others? Oh, yeah, Sammy Solis, who uh, you guys have seen here yeah. uh, at, at Petco, uh, James Pazos. And Solarte skids one across the diamond, and Myers unable to come up with a throw. And suddenly, John Solarte having trouble finding that first base glove on this home stand. That's his fourth Aaron throw. Well, he had plenty of time. The old crow hop. Just the release point is off, not getting it there. And that's one of those in-betweeners. It's more on the difficult side for a first baseman to pick. So a fourth out here in the third inning for the Cubs, who have the early lead on the Bryant home run. Saw Coach Cunningham here last night. Is he here tonight as well? I'm not sure. We're all out there in the uh, in the in the landing. Right. You know, uh, having a great time. Everybody's wearing their Bryant shirts out there. Hey, there's 275 people out there. The tickets sold out in 48 hours. Oh, that's great. Hey, Chris Bryant is the is the poster boy for not only USD baseball, for, but for the University of San Diego. Everything that he represents, um, you know, and embodies. You know, it's the same with USD. It's a values-based education, and we're just so proud. Parents here tonight? Yep, Mike and Susie are down there. He's got the most awesome fiance, Jessica, uh, from Las Vegas and, and some other uh family from Vegas down there. I'm not sure where they're sitting, but they're here supporting Chris and they got their Cubs gear on and you know, Chris has a lot of people around him to love him and uh, and that support him and you know, he's just one of those guys who wakes up in the morning and you know, puts put on a hoodie and you know, um, just get ready for the game. He's like I said, kind of too good to be true. Doesn't go out it's all about baseball, man. He just wants to win. Here's another good one, Addison Russell, and he hits one to left center field. Dickerson and Jankowski, and Dickerson can't get it. The break for the Padres, ground rule double, so unable to score from first base is Ben Zobris. He'll have to go back to third. And we'll let you go, coach. I know you want to enjoy the 
the fun with all the USD people there. Great to have the Toreros with us. We'll be following you in the spring. We're lucky to have <laughs> such outstanding baseball in, in our city and, and county. It's uh, it's exciting for all of us. Well, it's exciting for us too, Dick. And man, you got a great voice. I'm up here in the, uh, in, the in the booth here, man. This is like this is the Hall of Fame. That's all I've got, man. <laughs> oh my gosh! I'm going to tell you guys, man. My wife says, you know, I like. Mark and Dick better than the all-star announcers. Am I allowed to say that up here? You can say anything you want. You're the coach of the I USD. tell you what, man. Yeah, you guys do a great job. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Good to see you. You too, Mark. Yeah. Right, Tickets coach. will be free next time, Coach. <laughs> good awesome. Good Thanks luck again. To your thank you for joining us. And a high fly ball out behind second that Shim takes care of. But Chris Bryant, they're here to cheer him, and he gave them a chance early. A line drive home run, just uh, 354 feet, but far enough, and the Cubs lead 1-0. San Diego presents Padres Baseball, brought to you by Saquon Casino. Sign up for the new Padres Club card today. By Jack in the Box, try his new Smoky Jack. Taste it before it's gone. And by Mercury Insurance, we're on a mission to save you money. Log on to mercuryinsurance.com today. Yeah, there's the souvenir, Brian's home run. A young fella has his mitts wrapped around that. One nothing as we go to the bottom of the third. It'll be Patrick Kivlahan, Luis Sardinius, and Christian Friedrich. Kivlahan, uh, while we were saluting our sponsors, grounded out. I think Anthony Rizzo may have pulled his foot a little early, but uh, Mark McGuire on the phone, and they're going to wave it off, it looks like. Rizzo and a lot of good first basemen they learn that trick they can leave just a little early and now it's going to be tougher with the challenge system. Let's check this one out as Brian fires across. Just kept his toe on yep. the top of the bat. Sardinius one for three in his debut as a Padre last night. He's a switch hitter 23 from Bolivar Venezuela. Two and oh the count. Texas signed him as a international free agent. And of course, AJ Preller was part of the Ranger organization, so he knows all about this young guy. And so when he was available, cut by the Mariners, the Padres grabbed him. That's a strike, two and one. That's the lane changing two seam fastball to the lefties. Isn't that incredible? You bring up the coach of the Toreros, yeah, and we're talking about Brian, and he hits a home run. Yeah. Come on now. You can't write scripts like that. No. That's what makes this game so special. Don't ever try to figure it out. It'll ruin your life. A 
And a rare free ticket, a second from Jake Arietta tonight. And reminder tonight's telecast presented by Sony, the leader of 4K Ultra HD. Nice turnout again tonight. Lots of Cubs fans here. You've already heard them react. Well, I got a little nugget on Christian Friedrich. He's probably going to put it down right here. Hey, when the Cubs players have a toothache or they need a cavity filled, you know where they go? Where? Christian Friedrich's dad. He's the official dentist of the Chicago Cubs. Is that right? Yeah. How do you like them apples? He bunts, and let's see. They're going to go for the put out there, then back to first. It's a double play. Bunted too hard, and the Cubs play it perfectly. Do they do anything wrong? Second double play in three innings for Chicago, and Arietta has gone through the first three pitching to the minimum number. Good charge, as uh, that's a different kind of an alignment as the second baseman charged in and made the play. How about that? Ryan's 33rd homer of the year, giving the Cubs the 1 0 lead after three. And let's go back to the bunt double play. When's the last time you saw this? The first baseman isn't covered. Ben Zobris comes in from second charging, gets the ball early, and turns it into a 4 6 3 double play. No, it was Baez who came in from second, rather. A good turn at shortstop. Also, new wrinkle there for Joe Madden. You know that the Bunder is trying to go toward first base because the first baseman Rizzo is holding on the runner, so he charges. Look where the second baseman is, charging hard. And you know what? If you think about it, let's say that ball that's pitched is missed. You know that the runner at first base can't get as a big lead because Rizzo's there. You can only snap throw behind the runner at first, keeping the first baseman there, rather than having the second baseman trail all the way back around that's the runner at first base. Interesting. Yeah. Had you seen that before? I haven't. No. And then you saw Edison Russell the quick reactions with the feet and arm yeah. to complete the double play. And here is Baez with Contreras and Arietta to follow. He grounded to short. Actually, it was the second baseman Chimp playing on the left side as he is now that made the play. Number one being Chimp. Sardinius in the hole. Salarte a third. High pop up on the right side. Only Myers there. And just in fair territory for the first down. Wilson Contreras doubled his first time. Quite a buzz in the ballpark with the 
winning his team in baseball here, the Cubs. 20 and 5 in their last 25. That's become a very popular T-shirt with the horn rim glasses that Joe Madden wears, and his famous saying. You see a lot of Cubs. Try not to suck. <laughs> is what Joe Madden says. <laughs> okay. And it's a hot ticket in Chicago. Cubs fans all the way around baseball. I guess they're selling a lot of Cubs merchandise here at Petco Park, you know, with so many Chicago fans that live now in uh, Southern California and San Diego County here. Upset some of the locals that they're selling Cubs gear, but hey, that's uh, all legal tender that they're paying for those things. It all goes to the system, it all goes to the Padres, and uh, that money can be used down the line to get themselves another ball player. Two and one to Contreras. Well, after the Padres had to face John Lester last night, he gave up a, a run, a freakish run on a strikeout. That ball drilled but fouled deep into left field, up into the second deck, just to the edge of the bricks of the Western Metal Supply Company building. And tonight, Jake Arietta, the Saw Young winner. And then tomorrow, Kyle Hendricks. Don't forget that's a 12 40 game. And Hendricks, while his record is 11 and 7, his ERA is the best in Major League Baseball, 2.16. And the Cubs, of course, as a five man rotation, have the best earned run average collectively, those five starters of any five in the big leagues. Lineup stacked with power and a pitching five that are very stingy. That's why they have the best record in baseball. And they're going for their 80th win tonight. Well, even though it's a full count, good a sequence of pitches here from Friedrich. In, out, up, down. Tried to bury that last pitch into Contreras to get him tied up. Well, this is where if you can have good control of a changeup, really spin him into the ground. Well, Contreras wants him to throw the ball right away. He's stepping out if uh, Friedrich takes any time at all. Now they're both ready. Three and two. And in the dirt, ball four, the second walk by Friedrich tonight, and that'll bring up the pitcher Arietta. Time now for greater coverage of baseball, brought to you by T-Mobile. News and notes around baseball: Madison Bumgarner, 0-3 last four games versus LA. Trail is two to one up uh, at Dodger Stadium. Andrew Kashner, six innings, four hits, just one earned run in the Marlins' tough loss, one nothing to Kansas City. And Josh Hamilton is placed on unconditional. Release waivers, so he's out there for anyone else that wants to hire Hamilton. And tough luck for Kashner to pitch that well and come up with a one nothing loss. Hits by pitchers Hamill of Chicago and Arietta of Chicago, two Cubs in the top three. 13 hits and 50 at bats. For Arietta. Well, he's doing well in the first pitch strike category. Christian Friedrich, 15 of 18 first pitch strikes. Outside. Yeah, if they had a home run. There would be four pitchers, and we all flirted around with that idea earlier this season. Madison Bumgarner certainly would be one you'd want to tap on the shoulder, and Jake Arietta would be another. One nothing Cubs here in the top of the fourth. Mm, 
up the mask of Bethancourt. Well, here's evidence of Arietta, one of his two home runs this year, that against Arizona. And he grilled that a long way. And he likes the ball middle, middle in. And yeah. another against Cincinnati going the opposite field. Just made it in. One and two. Doesn't dress like a pitcher, does he? Hmm. Nice. He looks at strike three. Friedrich spins one in, and that's his first strikeout. Well, a big looping curveball out of the hand of Friedrich. Hitters will give up on it. Even Jake Arietta, you just can't lay it in there. You've got to make a good quality pitch. There's the curveball right on the inside corner. Nice frame job by Christian Bethencourt. Dexter Fowler up twice has grounded twice to Sardinius at short. High fly ball right field. Kill the hand tucks it away. And we go to the bottom of the fourth. Padres trailing one nothing. Bryant. Clay Hensley is joining us now, and he has maybe the primo seat in the entire ballpark. Not that there are any bad seats here. I mean, ch check this out right here. Uh -oh. This is amazing. Pretty good spot. You know, we're right there on the field. You see Arietta. I mean, it's pretty close. Turns out these particular seats are a good buddies by him. Tim Foley, we play golf together at Rancho. All right, you tell us what you see from Jake Arietta. You could be the umpire. Yeah, you know, this is the deal with Jake. He's been doing this all season. Right there, first pitch straight. You can see it too, his breaking ball has so much late break to it. Tough to pick up, great old curveball to start up with him. Travis Jankowski leading off the fourth. First changeup we've seen tonight right there, Clay. Yeah, yeah, this is the deal. We were talking about this last night, and the thing is, his pitches all come from the same arm angle. He doesn't deviate from his delivery. Chop to the left side. Russell on the second hop. Throws him out. One away. Padres have had two base runners. Jankowski walked in the first, but was picked off third. And a single by Dickerson in the second, but he was erased on a double play, Bethancourt. So Arietta's worked to the minimum to this point as Myers steps up. Clay, I've got a question for you. How many years removed have you been from the big leagues? Retired in 14. Okay, my point is that game is very quick down there, isn't it? It gets yeah, quicker it's the closer fast. you get to the field, right? Well, here's the deal. I mean, it speeds up so much when you're in the game, when you're playing the game. You know, you see these guys, the defensive players, sit there, the, the picks that they make, how quick they have to make the reaction. It's funny because even just, you know, retiring a few years ago, you get up here, you're sitting up in the seats, can't really tell the speed of the game. You get down here right on front of them, it's pretty fast. First pitch strike to Myers. Yeah. 
That last pitch was a curveball out of the hand. And Arietta, Clay, from your vantage point, try hitting this. No chance. I got no chance with Uncle Charlie. <laughs> There's a reason I'm a pitcher. <laughs> Ahead of Myers, two strikes. Oh, did you see that Contreras wanted to call time, didn't he? Oh, he Cliff threw up his bare hand as if to say, don't pitch yet, yeah. but Arietta went through with a slider away. Contreras, like, hey, time? Well, okay, you want to throw it? And just misses with a little cutter away. That's paint. Absolutely. Myers gets a break on that call, two and two. And you see right there on those pitches, he threw that cutter, barely misses. Comes back with that fastball. Both of those pitches from my vantage point are breaking right at the same point. Ground ball to third. Bryant there. Fires across. Two away. Couple of ground outs here in the fourth. Jankowski and Myers. That'll bring up Jan Salarte, who struck out, took a third strike, his first at bat. You know, guys, and that sequence right there is why Jake Arietta is having so much success. Goes with a cutter away, close pitch, comes back with a sinker away, another one that was close, and then he pounds that sinker in the hands and gets him to roll over. Only one hit for the Padres. Dickerson's looping single to right field to lead off the second. 94 right at the bottom of the strike zone, doesn't get the call. It is interesting when on television it it sterilizes the speed of the game. It's true of football, it's true of boxing, it's true of basketball. Then you get down right on the level of play and it's eye popping. That's a wake up call. Yeah, it, I mean, it speeds up when you're down here. It speeds <laughs> up for sure. It's just like you said, Dick, you know, TV doesn't really do the game justice. You look at hockey, sports like that, they do, you can't tell how fast those guys are working. You get down here on the field, it's moving pretty quick. Makes it all the more incredible how talented these hitters are to make a judgment of a pitch in just a mini second out of the hands. You don't have much time to decide whether or not you're going to pull the trigger or not on a pitch. If you hesitate, you'll hear the sound of strike three in the glove of the catcher. Two and one now to Salarte. Mm. Look at that tail on that pitch. Now, as a hitter, you got to start guessing. Okay, that pitch inside is he going to cut it in or is he going to two seam it back? Fouled it off, just got a piece. So that last sequence there, those last two pitches, two seamer in, came in for a strike. That curveball down and in. But he's really wearing out as you take a look at the pitch count by inning. Really wearing it out on the inner part of the plate to the lefties. Now he wants to go away. Swing and a miss, strike three. Second strikeout for Arietta. He retires the side in order in the fourth. After four, Petco. Arietta and the Cubs lead 1 0.
Welcome back. Cubs 1 0 after 4, and tonight's cold hard facts are brought to you by Clean Crisp Coors Light. The Cubs record after 124 games looking back through the seasons. Now, 2012, 13, and 14. The Padres actually the same number of games, 53 and 72, basically. So you only have to go back a couple of years and see the Cubs, you know, just a Having an average but poor season. And then 73 51, 79 wins last year at this time, and this year they're going for their 80th tonight. We say that because it allows us to make the glass half full when you look at the Padres' future. And you can turn it around in a couple of years. You're building it, they built it in those seasons where they had losing records. And you're lucky enough because you don't have a good record. You get the second pick in the draft. And so let me, let me think about this kid out there in San Diego, Chris Bryant. Why don't we take him? Well, Clay, I know you are a right handed pitcher as opposed to a left hander. How would you pitch Chris Bryant? You know, I'd like to attack him a little bit like how Aria is attacking these lefties. You know, you got to pound him in a little bit. He does like the ball down. We've seen that already since he's been here in San Diego playing. But he he does get tied up a little bit. If it's a little up at the hands, a little up around the belt, it's got to be inside, though. You can't miss out over the plate or he'll punish him. That one misses low, three and one. Bryant, Rizzo, and Zobrist for the Cubs in the fifth. Bryant's home run was a low line drive just into the first row of the left. Field seats, 354 feet, and ball four. Third walk from Friedrich, leadoff man on. I got to tell you guys too, what's really impressive about Brian, especially being down here on the field, you can really see it. He tracks that ball all the way to the catcher's net, watches that pitch all the way in. He's got a very good plate discipline, good approach, and I like that he's got such a good eye, such a young age, especially being here in the big leagues. 23 years old has already accomplished so much. Here's Rizzo. Well, 3 1 pitch, right? Hitters count. He will gladly take the walk. Not going to swing at a bad pitch. Rizzo hits it high in the air to right. Kilvahan is there for the catch. And the first down. That was a really good pitch right there by Friedrich. You see Rizzo's on the dish. I don't know if you guys can tell that from up there, but he, I mean, he's literally almost on the chalk. Good pitch right there, fastball, and gets to jam him, gets him to fly out to right. Yeah, we've been talking about that. I mean, a pitcher normally would want to pitch him away on the outside corner, but he's so close to the inside corner that the outside pitch is right in the heart of the plate for him. <laughs> Yeah, and that was the ones whenever I'd be pitching against guys and they're all over the dish. It's so important to establish that inside part of the plate to open up away because otherwise, like you said, Dick, you throw that fastball away and it really seems like a middle end pitch to him. That's why he's been hit 14 times this year. He's not afraid to be struck by a pitch. Zobrist has singled and safe on the throwing error by Salarte. Mark Grant, it surprised you at all that not to really criticize Joe Madden, but you look at two hitters like Bryant and Rizzo, and why wouldn't one of those be hitting cleanup and Zobrist hitting second? Quite honestly, I can't speak for Joe Madden, but if I have hitters like Bryant and Rizzo, I want those guys up in the first inning, no matter what. That's, that's just the way I look at it. Drive the right center field, and that's up the gap. Kilgahan can't cut it off. Running all the way is Rizzo, and he will score. It's two to nothing on a double by Zobrist. 64th RBI of the season for the veteran infielder. Four seamer up, and once again, a mistake. Well, Zobrist does a nice job, and Clay, from your vantage point, what's up? Well, here's the deal. You know, that's like completely different from Rizzo. Obviously, right-handed batter, but he's way off the dish. If you notice how far he's off the dish, these guys are the kind of guys that kind of scare me a little bit because that inside part of the plate is right down the middle. But you see he dives a little bit, drives that ball to right field. Good A.B. One out in Addison Russell. Ground rule double the last time. Dick, back to your point regarding batting cleanup or third. Right. Tony La Russa, when he managed the Cardinals, he had a guy by the name of Mark McGuire. He batted him third. Because Tony's philosophy was, I want Mark McGuire up in the first right. inning. No, I agree with that. No matter that, what. 
you put your best hitter in the third slot, mm -hmm. not necessarily the cleanup spot. Right. You know, fans think that that's what. Uh oh, that had an awful sound if you're Frieder. That ball is going, going, and Russell has sent it out of here. That's his fifth home run in seven games. Addison Russell. And the Cubs lead it four to nothing. Number 19 for Russell. Guys, yeah, I got to tell you, that's the first time that I've seen a ball hit out of the park from this vantage point. He's got such good plate discipline, good swing. That ball was hit pretty hard. Well, Russell, who homered last night, has doubled and homered tonight. It's just hard to believe these. Well, he wears his uh, age on his back, 22. No, he's got 27. I'm sorry. He plays like he's 27. Hayward, 0 for 2 tonight, hasn't uh, gotten the ball out of the infield. with a homer last night his sixth of the season. Boy if he ever started hitting the Cubs line it really would be all world. Just miss it with the breaking ball. Frederick had given up only 10 home runs all season but a couple tonight. Bryant a solo and now a Russell a two run shot. Shift on. Strike three call. Second strikeout for Christian Friedrich. Both taken. And that'll bring up Javier Baez. Think about this for the future of the Chicago Cubs team. An infield well set right now. You know, we kind of made fun of the Cubs during the All-Star balloting. You know, they were going to be nine starters with the Cubs. But in many ways, this infield, you could argue that this is the best infield in all of baseball. And they're very young. Rizzo is the old man at 26. Baez is 23. Russell, 22. And Bryant, 24. I mean, they, they haven't reached their prime yet. Yeah. Well, Rizzo's close. But it, I mean, poof. If they have them tied up on any long term contracts, watch out for the North Siders. Well, that's the thing. The Cubs have the wherewithal to keep that intact for many years. Get old Joe Madden, a rocking chair with this lineup. A bat, but a nice glove. He was at third last night. The do or die starts a look at this bad throw, able to go down barehanded tonight and make the double play. And here he's charging, not the first baseman. The second baseman charges, turns the sacrifice into a double play. He's very athletic all the way around. One and two the count. Shift on. And he fouls it away. We got Hawk fans here. We got Cub fans here. We got Padre fans here. Need to wake up the Padre fans with some offense. Well, look at those T-shirts. And my dear mother was a very religious soul and a big baseball fan. She would have shuddered at the fact you'd wear a shirt like that in public. But it's the thing to wear. My mom said it all the time. She didn't say it. <laughs> I mean, you might have deserved it. <laughs> I guess it's a positive thing. Actually, it's a negative. Try not to. 
so maybe that makes it a positive. Well, you know what? In all sincerity, there are certain words in the English language that become added to the dictionary as vernacular that are used. And after a certain amount of time, it's used in a certain way to where it's defined as not doing well. Right? I wonder if Webster has done that yet. I don't think so, not yet. I, I think it's, I think it's, uh, you know what? We have the technology. Yeah, let's go call Noah. Jankowski makes the catch in deep center field. And that's it for the Cubs. They score three and they enjoy a 4 nothing lead. Welcome back. It's time for the top tier player profile brought to you by Arco. Jake Arietta, career with the Orioles, 20 and 25, and ERA up there, 472. With the Cubs, 51 and 18, a couple of no hitters, a 2.81 ERA. Almost impossible to hit. The best batting average against of any pitcher in baseball, 187 opposing batters against this man, Arietta. Alex Dickerson has the only hit tonight. One and one. And that was a soft single into right field in front of Hayward to lead off the second inning. Schimpf and then Bethancourt to follow for the Padres. Inside two and one. There it is, Arietta, National League leader, but that's also the best in all of baseball with Rate is number one in the American League as well. Foul tip. And once again, going up out of the zone by design. It's just not down and in, down and away. It's up as well. And, and pitchers can practice that. I mean, that's what bullpen sessions are for. Cubs not only got Arietta, but Pedro Strobe, who is a key member of their bullpen, although injured now, plus two in international signing slots. From Baltimore. Fouled away. And uh, they sent Scott Feldman and catcher Steve Clevenger to Baltimore. And Feldman's yeah. had good success there with the Orioles. You know, it was it, it was only in 2013 that this kid, Jake Arietta, was sent down to the minor leagues from Baltimore. Made his way back and in, you know the cutter, the location of the fastball, and uh, turned it around. Two and two in the dirt. And efficient uh, 53 pitch effort so far for Arietta. Three home runs for Joe Madden's club last night, two tonight. Let's see if Dickerson can lay into one here. Pretty much going to get a two seam fastball. Oh, look Inside, at that. Cutter. Ball four. Third walk from Arietta. Yeah, 
go back to last year. Yet Arietta 22 and 6 with that 177. Grinky 19 and 3, a better winning percentage and a better ERA. I mean, that was a tough vote. But Arietta got the call, throwing another uh, no hitter for Arietta. Yeah, anytime on the win column when you see a two and it's double digits, I mean, that, you know, that 19, hey, a lot of guys will take that. But, uh, you know, 20 and above, that's that's got a really sexy look to it. Let's see, if memory serves me. 1968, Denny McLean won 30 games. Yeah. He's the last one to win 30. Yeah. You know what? 68. I, wow. I bet my bottom dollar that'll never happen again. Not the way pitchers right. are being trained today. Seven inning process. Ryan Shim fly to right his first time. And works the count to 2 and 0. Oh. Rare flash of uh, having trouble finding the strike zone from Arietta. His Control hasn't been spotless this year compared to a season ago. Foul back. So, how many walks per nine innings pitch? He's that walked three tonight and four innings plus. There you see, two, three, six walked less than two per nine innings last year and three and a half this year, and as we mentioned, three already tonight. You know what that tells me sure the walks are up but it's maybe that one pitch during an at bat that makes the difference in the world as far as an outing is concerned. High in the air to center field that chases Fowler back to the warning path to the wall and makes the catch. Schimpf gave it a good ride but he picked the wrong part of Petco Park. Right away center field the deepest part of the ballpark. Well, it looked like Arietta wanted to go up the ladder again. And it's tough sometimes with the movement on a two seamer or a four seamer, whatever the case is, a high two seamer, to get on top of it just a little bit more. This one he works underneath it and it stays in the yard. Flirted with number 15, Schimpf. Here's Christian Bethencourt grounded into a double play his first time. In the dirt. Didn't go. A uh, reminder the final game of the homestand and the final game of this series, of course, will be tomorrow. We'll be on the air at 12 noon, game time 12.40. Fox Sports San Diego, Padres Live, the pregame show at noon. Paul Clemens for the Padres against Kyle Hendricks. Round ball to short. No, over to third. Bryant cuts it off. The relay is in time, and Bethencourt is grounded into another double play. Around the horn, Bryant cutting in front of the shortstop to get the quick throw to second. And Baez with the relay to first.
happy and Chris Bryant as he did last night homers to left field that was in the third inning to make it one nothing Chicago kid made a nice catch out there in the first throw. And then look at the play by as the second baseman charges Rizzo stays at first and the bunt try becomes a double play. And then it's Baez. Zobrist rather uh, double to knocks in a run to right center. And then Addison Russell follows with his second home run in as many games. And Russell's fifth in the last six and a half games. And it's a four nothing Cubs lead. That's our Harris game summary. Four runs, six hits for Chicago. No runs, one hit. A looping single by Alex Dickerson against Jake Arrieta for the Padres. Top of the sixth. Wilson Contreras has doubled and walked. Clay is back with us with the new location. Now you don't have a screen to protect you now. I hope you brought your glove. <laughs> Got some reaction. I'll duck behind this camera right here. No, it's uh, you, you know what you see right here with the Chicago Cubs is fundamental baseball. How about the play on the sacrifice bun charging the second baseman instead of the first baseman? Exactly. You know, I was looking at that on the replay, and it, I mean that looks like something out of spring training where you're working on these drills. The fact, I mean, they're just turning these double plays really smooth, playing good, sound, fundamental baseball, driving in runs, and uh, obviously you see the pitching that they have. And it gets uh, no easier tomorrow afternoon when Kyle Hendricks takes the mound with the best. ERA in all of baseball 2.16. That's in there two and two. Contreras couldn't pull the trigger. Wilson with two L's. Contreras. Could be maybe his parents thinking. Well, we'll call him Will someday. If there is a will, there is a way, you know. Yeah, you're absolutely good call. <laughs> Ground ball to short. Nice soft hand. Sardinius throws him out. Talking with Pat Hughes, the longtime radio broadcaster for the Chicago Cubs, and you know, it's something we we know, but we don't express very often. And with the Cubs' long drought, and there's Pat going to the World Series and so many high hopes all through the years, but doesn't happen in a century's time. And he says he's getting email emails from you know men and women that are 90 and 91, and and they're just begging, please, we're not going to be here forever. <laughs> We've waited a long time. Please make this the year. <laughs> I mean the city of Chicago that north side especially trying to embrace finally a World Series championship that Jersey Ernie Banks number 14 that class of a guy Hall of Famer never played in a postseason game Can you imagine I guess they didn't have the wild cards yeah. and the extra chances then. Had they gone to the division playoff then? And I think Banks, it mm -hmm. still might have been the American League against the National League chief. Yeah. Arietta has flied to center and took a third strike. That right there just goes to show you how hard it is to sure. truly get to the dance. You know, it, even if you're the highest caliber player, I mean, it's tough. High fly ball slicing into the right field corner. Kivlahan, watch out down there. Oh, overran it. Arietta is around second. He'll make it to third as the ball comes in on the relay all the way to Will Myers and tough to play that corner. And we saw even the veteran Matt Kemp have his troubles out there. There are so many angles as you go into the Petco porch. And then the ball sliced back behind Kiv uh, Just a bad read. A very catchable ball. Should have been caught. Tough break for Christian Friedrich. It's ruled a triple. So one out, infield in. Cubs already have a four nothing lead. Dexter Fowler grounded out twice and fly to right.
Takes it low. And the Cubs fans are crowing. As they now have a 4 0 lead and a chance to add on on the misplayed fly ball in right. Two and zero. Oh. Fowler walks a lot, and that's dangerous business because then you've got Bryant and Rizzo to follow. Yeah, time for a breather and time for a little meeting with Darren Ballsy, the pitching coach of the Padres. You might think that a pitcher Arietta doesn't have a triple, but that's his third triple Arietta career. Any of those in Chicago? It's hard to believe. I guess you could get one that uh, turns off the the bricks there before the ivy grows. You could see trouble written all over that one. Yeah, overran it. Now that wall comes up and meets you very quickly. It, uh, it's one thing when it's straight away in right field, but down in the corner only 322, and then it angles out. Then it cuts sharply. 3 and 0 to Fowler. Here's where you're talking, Dick, as far as the uh, 322 goes here, then there, and then there. And he ran right into that angle. Now Fowler swung at a 3 0 pitch last night, gave the Padres a favor, and popped up. And he takes ball four, a four pitch walk. Follow Padres Baseball Live with the MLB.com at that app. Stay up to the moment at any moment with game day, live game video highlights, stat cast, news, and more. Download MLB.com at that, the number one app. Live baseball on your phone and tablet. So balls they go to the phone. The bullpen is busy now for the Padres. Here's Chris Bryant as he lines one into the left field bleachers back in the third inning. Nice catch by that young fellow there, brought his glove. Isn't that great? <laughs> well, not so great for the Padres as uh, Bryant and the Cubs have a 4 0 lead, and that'll be all for Christian Friedrich. We have one out in the sixth inning, and the Cubs in front. Most of the work is done in BP. Even when, even when I'm not um, intensely shagging or aggressively shagging, I, I try to hone in on the swings and just the con contact point, you know, just to help with reads. And, you know, over time, you know, something that I, I've done every day for a very long time is just, you know, try to focus on what, where the contact point is, you know, which direction the ball is going to go as early as possible to, to help with my jumps. and. You know, I think it's it's definitely helped. 
Well, that was a sneak preview of tonight's all-new SD Live featuring Jabari Blash tonight after Padres Live right here on Fox Sports San Diego. Well, wait a minute, not just featuring Jabari Blash. But Mike Pomerantz. How about him? Give him a little hubba, love. Hubba hubba. He does <laughs> such a great job on that show, doesn't he? Shoot rock fire. <laughs> <laughs> he does indeed. Yeah. Chris Bryant, a walk, a home run, a walk. He scored twice. Runners at first and third. Pitcher Arietta has been on base for quite a while now with the pitching change to Brandon Morrill. And that change is brought to you by El Cajon Ford. Well, you got to be really happy for Brandon Morrill. Bouncing back, being very uh, persistent and uh, trying to hone his craft, get back to health. 96 on the fastball. Ball's coming out of his hand very nicely. Yes, yeah, looks good. His form looks really good. You know, hey. You got to admire the perseverance, you know. I mean, it's it's tough to go through something like that to make it back. You know, you got to be pretty happy. You kudos to him. And of course, all the while fighting diabetes his entire life. First and third, looking for a double play ball. One and two now to Bryant. Against Arietta, you can ill afford the Cubs just adding on to their four nothing. Lead here in the sixth inning. Schempf is shaded almost behind second base. So a ball hit to him. He'll have to take it to the bag himself to turn two. High fly ball, center field, Jankowski drifting in. Arietta has tagged and he will score. The throw comes into second base and it's five to nothing. Bryant. With the sack fly. A couple more RBIs tonight, 86 on the year. So the difficulty, Kip Lahan with a fly ball on the right field corner leads to another Cubs run. That'll be charged to Friedrich, of course. And here's Anthony Rizzo, two fly balls to right and a ground out to second. Him found in shallow right field with a shift on, but we saw Rizzo beat it last night going to left field. Strike. 0 and 1. Started tonight after a four hit performance last evening at 3.01, did Rizzo. Good cut fastball right there at 88. That's where you got to get in his kitchen there. That is a ball that is tough to keep fair, right? As a hitter, left handed hitter who's up on the plate like that, that's a, a good job by Morrill burying that fastball in there. All right, now with two strikes, let's see if Rizzo chokes up as he did last night. And yep, here he is again. He's going to give up on the bat a little bit to have more control. See many power hitters concede that when you're in the hole that it's going to be tough. Don't that with control of the bat, you can check swing on a ball in the dirt. Gives you more control. It gives a slider or cutter in. And he gets it. Nice. That's well done by Brandon Morrow. But the Cubs add on, and after five and a half, they lead by five.
We head to the bottom half of the sixth inning with the Padres trailing five nothing and it's time for in the driver's seat brought to you by Kia and Jake Arrieta. It's walk three allowed only one soft single. Has struck out a couple and has pitched to the absolute minimum 15 hitters in five innings helped out by three double plays and a pickoff at third. Yeah, remember Dick we were talking about the walks being up this year for Jake Arrieta it, it, it kind of proves my point when he walked a hitter in one of the innings he made a good pitch to get a double play or he got a help from his catcher to throw out a runner that's my point the really really good pitchers can make that adjustment and make that one pitch to get him out of trouble even if the walks are up give the hand rounded out to third his first time testimony to Arietta stuff there's been only one fly ball out. Check that too. Both off the bat of Ryan Schimpf. How back. You know to touch on that Mark too. You know as a sinker ball pitcher, uh, you know I'm no, nobody wants to go out there and give up walks. But at any time, uh, you know Arietta or I gave up a walk, or you think about this when you're a sinker ball guy. Okay, let's get the double play. Now we get out of the inning. You know, and that's one of the things that he has success with. Is yep. that, that power sinker helps out so much. One ball, two strikes to Kivlahan. Did he go? Played umpire Nick Lynn says, yes, you did. Number three, that's the third strikeout for Arietta. Clay Hensley, you had a, a darn good sinker as we take a look at this cut fastball away. And once again, just enough off the plate with two strikes where a hitter has to maybe offer at it. He can't hold up, and there's the strikeout. But in go to time play was it the two seamer that you went to without a doubt I think if you talk to any any sinker ball pitcher go with your bread and butter get the ground ball you're one pitch away Woody Williams just always say that yeah Luis Sardinas walked his only time making his first start for the Padres at shortstop and he hasn't been tested with a difficult play but he's made uh, an impression in terms of how I mean, he's just got that loose, gliding feeling, yep. soft hands, a strong arm. Switch hitter. Out of play. It's fun to watch kids like Luis Sardinas play shortstop. You know, Joe Madden and Andy Green, you know, they know that they see a good infielder and they've got the good feet and they're good around the bag. The luxury of Sardinius also is that he can play second, he can play short, he can play third. And he gets the count in his favor, three and one. Alexei Ramirez is in the on deck circle. The pitcher spot is due next. You know what I think is impressive about Sardinius, you know, especially at such a young age, if you look at some of the ground balls when he's thrown for his footwork, his footwork's amazing. Fouls that back toward us. Another of the many, many outstanding baseball players produced by the country of Venezuela. Punch to the left side. Here's the other shortstop. Russell on the run, and he gets him. Two away. Time now for the Quicken Loans Rocket Arms. And the MLB leaders most strikeouts by pitchers. The Dodgers lead the way with the National second and the Cubs third. 1096. Collective strikeouts from their staff. Rocket arms. Alexei Ramirez. He's had some success against Arietta. And he goes first ball hunting and Russell with an easy play. One, two, three inning, and through six innings, Arietta facing the absolute minimum.
Diego presents Padres Baseball, brought to you by Pinnacle on the Park. Make your new home here. Visit PinnacleOnThePark.com for details. And by Petco, your complete pet store. And by your San Diego County Lexus dealers. First place Cubs, by far and away the winningest record in all of baseball. And trying to continue their dominance here in August. They're 16 and 4. Kevin Quackenbush comes in to work the top of the seventh inning. Well, last time Kevin was out there was against the Diamondbacks in that weekend series, his 45th appearance. Been up and down a couple of times. You see the splits right there. And, and first of all, before we get to Kevin, what a good job by Brandon Morrow. It's really good to see him get out there, make some good quality pitches, striking out Anthony Rizzo to end that sixth inning. Good stuff from the right hander. Quackenbush takes over here in the seventh. And we'll face the middle three of the Cubs order Zobrist, Russell, and Hayward. Cubs got five last night, 5 1 win. Padres only run coming on a strikeout wild pitch. And they've got five again tonight using the home run ball. Five seems to be the magic number five home runs in the two games. 0 oh 2. Zobrist, a line single to left and a RBI double to right. And safe uh, third time on an error by Salarte. You know, Dick, I I'm kind of guilty of it. And when you think of guys like Kevin Quackenbush, we have a tendency to look at professional athletes and think they're robots. Not only is it a physical grind, but a mental grind. This is the third stint for Kevin Quackenbush. He's been sent down three times. That's not easy between the ears. Line to left, Dickerson toward the line and makes the play. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the San Diego Padres. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. Hey, think about it. Even, you know, even in our profession, you know, you, you think you're doing a good job. You get through April, and uh, your boss says uh, you're going to uh, do the Chihuahua games uh, <laughs> for for a couple of weeks, and you hope you get back, and then you do work your way back, and, yeah. and uh, doing nice work. But it's July now, and we'll see you in San Antonio. <laughs> High fly ball to center, easy chance for Jankowski, and Russell is gone. He's doubled in homer tonight. I remember I was in Washington D.C. with the team and I was in the clubhouse after the game and I, and I saw Kevin. He was going around to his teammates giving him hugs and I thought you know what happened. And I, I said quack what happened. He goes I got sent down. And he took it like a champ you know. And it's so easy in this game to get dejected and get down on yourself. Well the game tests you daily. Jason Hayward. Well, he handles it like a champ like all these guys. And that's why he's back. Yeah. If you're gonna, the quack is back. Yeah, there you go. If you go around pouting and uh, down in the minor leagues, uh, you're not encouraging anyone to bring you back up here. Inside, two and zero. Oh. Hit well to right center field that had a long sound on it and it goes up against the base of the wall. Hayward cruises into second with a double. Oh, he hit that solidly. He thought he had a home run. We got extended on that one and sometimes it seems like Jason Hayward kind of gets tied up a little bit. When he swings, see, see where his hands, his hands are pretty clear away from his body on that one. He gets extended. Remember, Mark Sweeney did a nice job of breaking down his swing earlier in the year. Because his setup kind of looks uncomfortable and his top hand is wrapped. And it kind of almost looks like he's got motorcycle hands. But that particular back got his hat, hands separated from his body and back and then unloaded for a nice swing. 20th double, as you can see. Two outs. He's at second for Javier Baez. Ball one. Go for three tonight, the Cubs second baseman. Third baseman last night. 
You know what I just noticed, Dick? A lot of the Cub hitters, and I've been I've been failing to keep track. A lot of the guys are wearing the guard, uh, protecting the uh, the front part of the face. They were certainly because he was hit in the right. face, and and then uh, when he didn't need it anymore, he wasn't hitting. So he said, maybe I need to put it back on. And he felt more comfortable. Baez, we don't know about uh, whether he'd been struck in the face. One has to guess so. A ball and a strike. Rip the third. Salarte has it. And throws. Oh. And he pulls him off the bag or not? No. Myers just maintained contact. Boy, Salarte is really challenging his first baseman in this series. And the Cubs are on the phone. They're going to have a look with their video. People and uh, he clearly has his foot on the bag. Good job by the rangy Myers to save Solarte. The game is set early on and in the first inning for the Cubs with a runner on third base, Travis Jankowski. Look at Kit Contreras, set him away, right? He's going to get a fastball away. Why? Well, Travis Jankowski taking too big of a secondary lead. Now, he caught him just right. Jankowski's momentum was going towards home plate. Chris Bryant is on the move, and the dive also helps Contreras make a good solid throw to third base and right for the tag for the out. Almost a pitch out, wasn't it? Yeah. Jankowski slaps that one foul. He has walked and grounded to short with that walk in the first inning and his 28th stolen base, stole third. That was erased on that pickoff throw by catcher Contreras. Jankowski on base 22 consecutive games. That's the longest string uh, going in the National League. Grounded to short his last time. 0 and 2. With three double plays and the pickoff, the four base runners for the Padres have been a race, so Arietta has worked to the minimum. And a swing and a miss, strike three. That's only his fourth strikeout below his average, but totally in command, Arietta. And but for a bloop single by Dickerson, he'd be working on a no hitter. That was the curveball after the two seamer, mixing it up a little bit. Not only the bite of that pitch, but the velocity of that pitch, that curveball in the 70s. Only 74 tosses from Arietta. Here's Myers up twice, grounded to third base both times. And takes it on the knees, but no, yeah, Arietta didn't like that call, and the Fox track shows that that ball was indeed at the knees. Nick Lentz doesn't give him the strike. It's interesting. A pitcher could do that. If the hitter did that, he'd be tossed. <laughs> Foul back. 
Arietta has one complete game this year. That was the no hitter. His pitch count very low. Got a chance for another. But Joe Madden, as he prepares his team for the playoffs, and we saw how quickly he went out and took uh, John Lester out of the game last night. And he's expressed the fact that he, he's not going to push him. You know, if it were a different situation, he might have had Lester go another inning. He's not going to waste any time. Sure. It's going to keep them fresh, even with a big lead. They don't need the honor of getting another inning in or going for a complete game. He's going to decide if there's any sign of fatigue or problem with opposing hitters uh, taking advantage. They're they're coming out. He wants some fresh for the playoffs. Broken bat, Looper to left, and in comes Dick and Zobris rather for the catch. Boy, that bat went all the way to the edge of the grass. Short stuff. Shattered. Two seamer up. And down by the label. My goodness. The lawn dart. Javelin. Shows you how strong Myers is. Normally that ball drops in for a hit, but it carried all the way out to Zobris. Two away. Salarte up twice, struck out twice. Yeah, Dick, just to elaborate on your point, the Cubs going in tonight, 12 and a half games lead, right, over the Cardinals. He's going to let his pitchers go out there, get a good workout in, get about 95 to 100 pitches, and plus with the five run lead, why not? Turn it over to the bullpen so those guys can get an inning of work or two. And those guys stay sharp. Hey, the complete game gone by the wayside. Yeah. It's a luxury he has with such a large lead. You know, it's interesting, uh, Pittsburgh is third. Behind St. Louis and the Cubs in the Central Division. With their record, they'd be only six out of first place in the West. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have trouble making it to a wild card. It's just the Cubs has stormed away, almost like a horse is in the gate and they break. And the one horse has a three uh, length lead out of the gate and he just keeps leading all the way around the track. You never can catch him. Wild card now, San Francisco and St. Louis would be the wild card teams in the National League. Two hopper out to Baez. It's another one, two, three inning for Arietta. Five, nothing. Chicago Cubs lead. Cincinnati and Texas Billy Hamilton first watch how far he goes to get it and then the catch he was in right field Did you see this he goes a long way? Hey, this guy's got some wheels steal some bags 
unbelievable play by Billy Hamilton. You know, we're lucky out here in San Diego to get a chance to watch Travis Jankowski develop into an elite defender. Billy Hamilton already is one. When Clay and I see you on Padres Live, the postgame show brought to you by Cox Communications. We'll break down everything that happened behind us here in the field at Petco. Also, we've got a preview of tonight's SD Live, which, as you know, gentlemen, and hopefully folks at home have seen the promo, we've got Jabari Blash, who's going to join us as our guest. And you're going to hear from Andy Green. Plus, of course, we'll get you set for tomorrow's series finale. So all that, plus a whole lot more, some highlights to boot when we see you after the final out. Dick and Mark. All right. Thank you, Mike. New pitcher for the Padres, Carlos Villanueva here in the top of the eighth inning. Contreras, the pitcher, Arietta, if he hits. And Fowler, the bat for the Cubs. 5 nothing Chicago. So far in the series, the Cubs outscoring the Padres 10-1. to And only a wild pitch and a strikeout got the Padres run in yesterday. Contreras, a double a walk, and he grounded to short. Villanueva making his 47th appearance. ERA an even six. Home run has been his bugaboo, 17 of them in 66 innings. And plain and simple, got to throw up a bagel right here. One and two. The attendance tonight, 33,614. A couple thousand more than last night. Arietta apparently is going to hit for himself. Ground ball through the right side. Second hit for Contreras. And a look at the pitching matchup for tomorrow's day game brought to you by Tough Shed. For the Padres, it'll be Paul Clemens, Kyle Hendricks, 11 and 7 with the best ERA in baseball, coming in 2.16. The Cubs had their top three lined up for this series, and the Padres are acknowledging the fact by performance that these guys are just tough to hit. Yeah, and if you don't like the matchup, tough shed. There you go. Make that a t shirt. There he had a, had a triple the last time on a high fly ball curling into the corner that Pat Kivlahan couldn't corral it. He overran it a bit. Sliced into foul territory for a tripper. He's tied out and struck out. Good catch made by a fan down below. And it's a Hawks fan. Yeah, Eddie Olchek, old school. Patrick Kane, Keith Magnuson, Bobby Hall, Stan Makita, Tony Esposito. Should I go on? No, no you, you got to cover it. The Blackhawks are on the ice. <laughs> yes, he did. Oh, please. Really? Two and one to Arietta. It's worth another look. Oh my goodness gracious. What do you think, Professor? I think I have to agree with you. Two and one. Good pitch. Arietta didn't get that pitch in the yeah. last inning and was barking at the umpire. You know the umpire Nick Lentz he has been calling the high strike tonight and not really that one at the knee right so hey he's been consistent can't argue with that. Lead off single Contreras here in the eighth off the end away though. Foul tip. Three and two. Back in 2008, Arietta was a member of the U.S. Olympic team in baseball. Fly ball to right. Kivlahan in control of that one for the first down. Let's check this uh, rooftop shot. Always a nice look into Petco Park, and it's brought to you by Pinnacle on the Park. I'm going to have to go up there someday. Have you been up there yet? The pinnacle on the park. Yeah. I'm waiting for the invitation <laughs> for the big, you know, the cocktail party, the tour, you know, well, entertainment. Uh, if I get an invitation, you can be my guest and vice versa. Hey, it's a deal. Okay. 
I mean, all we hear is it's sensational. But yeah. Maybe a little too highbrow for us. What do you think? Oh, definitely for me. Go from a double wide to that. Come on. Dexter Fowler batting left-handed. Started on the right side against the southpaw Friedrich and grounded out twice and fly to right. Plus, I saw a sign on that building: "No goats." Well, then, you know, can't win them all. Yeah. <laughs> Our friend George Mitrovich, San Diego's ambassador to the world. Ball gets away. And advancing to second is Contreras. He was listening to our dialogue last night about goats. You know, he's he's such an academic academician, George. So he goes right to Wikipedia and all those other resources, re researched it. And he claims that goats don't eat tin cans. Yeah, they just chew it and spit it out. Yeah. If it's not digestible, they will not yeah. eat it. I did a little research myself and he so should you have were leading me down a primrose path last yeah. night. Yeah. I went home and told everyone in my neighborhood, get a goat and let's see him eat a can. <laughs> We're going to have a party like a, you know, a goat party. Yeah, right in our close the streets. Oh, that one right up over the head of uh, Bethancourt. But he didn't know where it was on the bunt try. You know, have block parties, you know, and, you, and that could be the entertainment. They make great company. You let the goat come into the house when it gets cold. Absolutely. To come in and sleep with you, you know, when it's really cold. Sure. Keep you warm. Wild and woolly night. Outside, two and two. Those goats lie, you know. Two and two to Fowler. Good Swing pitch. and a miss. Strike out for Villanueva. Two away. Very good breaking ball. Remember the one that uh, Brandon Morrow threw to Anthony Rizzo? Same type of pitch. That breaking ball down and in. Swings right over the top of it for the strikeout. The key though is you've got to get it in there. You've got to trust it get it in there. Chris for Bryant has done something every time he's been out. Let's see if they can get him out. He's walked, he's homered, he's walked and scored, knocked in a run with a sack fly. That is collegiate coach Rich Hill with us earlier. Out with almost 300. Uh, University of San Diego fans up there in the left center field. They had a good time, and uh, their man, Chris Bryant, delivered almost immediately with a home run back in the third for the first run of the game. There they are. No, you can't beat fun at the old ballpark. No, park. you can't. It's the best. Hey, and by the way, this whole curse thing for the Cubs has got to do with a goat. Because back in the day, and I forgot his name, but he tried, he bought a ticket for his goat to come into the game, and they kicked him out, and he cursed the Cubs ever since then, and they haven't won a World Series since 1908. Well, why did he want to bring a goat to the ballpark anyway? That was his I pet? He, I guess he thought it was good, it was his pet goat, and he thought it would bring them luck. And since then, the curse of the GOAT has plagued the Chicago Cubs. Brian high in the air to center field. He got a lot of it. Jankowski to the wall and makes the catch. Couple of feet from another home run. Bottom of the eighth we go. Five nothing Cubs.
That was Bryant's home run the snared by a youngster brought his glove first row left field bleachers. What a souvenir for him. Alex Dickerson who has the only hit tonight. Off Arietta leads off the eighth inning and fouls it back. And his hit wasn't exactly a blistering line drive. And in fact, if indeed it would have occurred now, Hayward would have gone for a catch. But he pulled up and let it fall in front of him uh, back in the second inning when it seemed meaningless or there was no chance in risking a ball getting by him as it did last night. So Dickerson stands in the way of Arietta flirting with another no hitter. Pitched one last year against the Dodgers, this year against the Reds. One and two, and here's the hit. We'll cut fastball into Dickerson, got it down by the label. And then you watch Hayward played it in front of him, played it safely. Yep. But if that were to occur here now and there's a no hitter going he'd have gone for it Dickerson goes down swinging strike three. OK fans we always try to bring you something that perhaps you hadn't heard before now just to follow up on uh, the curse of the Billy Goat and here's how it went in the 45 World Series the Cubs played the Tigers eventually the Tigers would win four games to three there was a gentleman Billy Cyanus owned the Billy Goat Tavern. And he took his goat to game four of the World Series at Wrigley Field. Fans complained of the odor of his pet goat, <laughs> named Murphy, by the way. He was outraged. They took him and the goat out. He was outraged and allegedly declared, Them Cubs, they ain't going to win no more. I think that was him, not the goat. His you know, goat probably had better grammar, <laughs> which has been interpreted to mean that. There would never be another World Series right. game one at Wrigley Field, and so it is. And the Billy Goat Tavern still exists. It's underneath the L train down Michigan Avenue. And isn't it ironic that the Billy Goat's name was Murphy, and who killed the Cubs last year in the playoffs for the Mets? Oh, yeah. Daniel, Daniel Murphy. What goes around comes around. Well, no wonder you're taking such good care of your goat. That's good stuff though isn't it that's what's great about baseball. Well it's the curse of the babe you know the help in Boston but they finally overcame that. Schimpf takes inside three and one. I'm just trying to scramble here late and pick up at least a run spoil the shutout bit of Arietta and the Cubs. Well, that was only the 91st pitch for Jake Arrieta. He's getting a good workout in with the five nothing lead. Three and two. Challenge Schimpf with one right down the middle. He's good for 100 to 105. You know, you take a look at the last five six starts. Last five 101 to 108 in that area. I think Moises Alou had a chance to catch this ball. Now he certainly thought he would. Mark Pryor on the mound. Yeah, he took it right out of Alou's glove. Ground ball right side. Baez in the outfield throws him out. Good play. Two away in the eighth. Well, you love to see range from a shortstop. We talked about Addis Russell. We talked about Luis Sardinius in our pregame. Well, going to your right, going to your left, you got to cover some ground and then throw accurately on the move. And he did just that. And second baseman can take away hits as well. Yep. Nice range from Baez. Here's Bethancourt up twice. He's grounded into two double plays. No one on base this time. And he rips that one into the left field corner. That's the first solid hit against 
Arietta today, a double for Christian Bethencourt. Second hit of the night. You saw the other. All rise. Bethencourt is now in session. Well, let's see if Patrick Kivlihan can come up with a base hit and break the shutout bid. That was a two seamer middle in and it was elevated. It was up. And one of the few mistakes that Jake Arietta has thrown tonight and Christian Bethencourt making him pay for the double. Kivlihan has grounded to third and struck out. Inside ball one. Four for ten. First two games as a Padre. Actually three games now. One after the ball in off the plate. Two, and it's time to check the Cholula flamethrower. How oh, hot. Well, Jake Arietta could throw anywhere from 91 to 97 on the fastball with that two seam movement. 94 tonight, been very effective. And that's hot sauce. Tepid, huh? Yeah. That's a good word. One and two. Wave that and miss strike three. It's six strikeouts. Arietta. He leaves Bethancourt at second. Padres with only two hits through eight, and the Cubs maintain a 5 0 lead. Accumulated by the visitors from the north side in a 5 0 lead. Nine runs for Chicago, a couple of hits for the Padres off Jake Arietta. Brad Hand comes in for the Padres in the top of the ninth inning as we revisit our keys to the game brought to you by the San Diego Honda dealers. Well, the first one was hit Arietta's uh, mistakes. Padres only two hits, uh, Dickerson single, Bethlehem just doubled. That, those were the only two mistakes, so you're right on. <laughs> okay, I get you. And then fight for Friedrich. No runs for the Padres in five and a third innings pitched. And uh, that's where we stand right now. Five nothing Cubs here in the top of the ninth. And making his 67th trip to the mound. Solid ERA of 2.84. And his first pitch is in for a strike to Anthony Rizzo. Rizzo with four hits last night and five trips. We're in the collar tonight, 0 for 4. And done a solid job opposing hitters batting 198 against his offerings on the year. Oh, 
Rizzo, Zobrist, and Russell in the top of the ninth. Down in the third base dugout, some uh, handshakes, pats on the back. That would indicate perhaps that Arietta's night is through. He is good. 15 and 5 and three outs away from winning his 16th. That would make him the winningest pitcher in baseball, or at least in the National League. Strasburg has 15 for the Nationals, but he's on the DL now. In the dirt. Two and two. So they're going to go to the bullpen. Pena, Felix Pena getting loose. Ground ball into the shift. Solarte over on the second base side. Gets rid of Rizzo for the first out as we check our Carl's Jr. star of the game. And Jake Arietto certainly deserves that. About a single in the second, a double in the eighth. In between, he struck out six, did walk three, but in total command, adduced it three double play balls. And yeah, mostly worked the two seamer. He flipped up some curveballs at times. He threw maybe a handful of changeups as well. So as you mentioned, the command of that two seamer in and out, expanding the strike zone. Very successful night for the right hander. Zobrist, a single and a double, and a line out to left. Not going to run with the double in the fifth. And was aboard when Russell, who's in the on deck circle, homered. One and one. Field for a base hit. Dickerson over to get it on the second hop. A long single for Ben Zobrist. Three, four, five in the game. You know, it's the second time tonight. You really got to bury that breaking ball. If you're a left handed pitcher when he bats from the right side, just speeds up his bat. And he's able to keep that ball fair because it catches too much to play. You know, just for fun, uh, this morning looking through the box scores. And uh, checking the Seeger boys. Now you put those two numbers together. Kyle Seeger up in Seattle. Mm -hmm. He's hitting 288 with 24 homers. The kid Corey, 321 with 22 homers for the Dodgers. How many the brothers have hit 46 home runs and driven in 144 runs between them? Yeah, Seeger, uh, the LA version, is your rookie of the year, no doubt about yeah. that. Runaway. 321 with 22 homers, 61 RBIs for Corey Seeger. Is he 22 yet? Goodness. Swing and a miss. Madison Russell is not shortchanged, and uh, when he makes contact, watch out. He's fly to the outfield twice, doubled, and hit a two run homer. Now he's hit safely in seven straight games. Five home runs in those seven games. Grounded to short. Sardinius to Shimp, but he runs well along with his other attributes, and he's able to outleg the relay safe on the fielder's choice. Well, you could see Russell out of the box as soon as this ball was struck. He knows that he's got to stay out of the double play and easily beats this one. Head down, firing up the line. He doesn't want to go back to that dugout with a DP on his back. I remember another Cubs shortstop who used to run like that each and every time out of the box. Sean Dunstan. Yeah. He busted it out of the box every. So you talk about a guy giving you 90 feet every time. Sean Dunstan. And when you see players run like that, and uh, every fan can admire it, then you wonder why some just think that it's okay to jog with. Yeah. Concede the uh, 
the out. Hayward has doubled the last time, one for four. Ten hits for the Cubs, five runs, ten hits. No errors, nine left so far. That's Solarte over on the second base side taking care of Hayward. And the Padres come up, bottom of the ninth against a relief pitcher. Trying to sacrifice Baez, the second baseman charges, not the first baseman Rizzo, is the normal setup, and he turns it into a double play. We've not seen this before. Joe Madden coming up with a wrinkle to how to take away the sacrifice bun, and in this case, turn it into a flashy double play. Yeah, when I looked at that play after the th after the fact, I noticed that Rizzo staying there, being comfortable at his position, but if the pitch was not bunted. You control behind the runner at first base, and that allows the second baseman to charge rather than going all the way over towards the first base bag while the first baseman is crashing. So, hey, very innovative yeah. right there. Nice, yep. nice looking play. And they pull it against the opposing pitcher. Now, if that were a better hitter up there right. and Baez is charging, that could be very dangerous to his well being. But they don't figure that Friedrich's going to swing away. New pitcher is Felix Pena. He was called up from AAA Iowa. Joined the big league roster uh, in Colorado and made an appearance with uh, Strope on the DL. And they fill that void with this young guy, Pena. Had seven saves in 179 minor league games. Sardinius, Adam Rosales, second, and then the top of the order, Jankowski, here in the bottom of the ninth. 0-2 to the Padre shortstop who has walked and grounded to short. Padres managed six hits last night. Five off the starter John Lester. Only two tonight off Arietta. High one and two. Felix Pena, three pitch pitcher. Fastball slider change up. He's got a live arm. Averages about 95 and get up to about 98. In the dirt, levels the count. And a full count. Jumping ahead of the hitter, 0 and 2, he loses them. Sardinez with a leadoff walk here in the ninth. Here's a chance for the Padres, if nothing else, to try to break that shutout bid. Padres 
Cowboys have been shut out more than any National League team, and uh, indeed would like to avoid their 15th of the season. Andy Rosales batting for the first, or Adam Rosales batting for the first time uh, came in with the double switch and takes ball one. Chicago native Rosales. You know he's got a lot of family and friends are watching the Cubs telecast back home. Hitting 211, eight home runs. Ground ball through the left side for a base hit. Well, the first two men are on board for the Padres in the bottom of the ninth inning. And to the top of the order we go, and Travis Jankowski. And you can hear him cheering all the way from Park Ridge, Illinois, where Adam Rosales grew up, just about a little uh, north and west of Wrigley Field in the suburbs. Good to see Adam get aboard. And the world is Chapman, the flame throwing left hander, added to the Cubs bullpen here at midseason. In case, getting ready. In for a strike to Jankowski. Yeah, that's good back to back breaking balls there. Runner in scoring position. First pitch strike, Yacker. Second pitch. Even better to get quickly ahead 0 2. That tight American League East race. The top three teams all won tonight Boston, Toronto, and Baltimore. So. The Red Sox and Blue Jays remain tied for first with the Orioles two games back. You'll get all the other information if you stay tuned for Padres Live, the postgame show, which will follow the final out tonight. And Jankowski caught looking. He was struck out the last two times. One away here in the bottom of the ninth. Well, Pena must have been watching Jake Arietta because that's a four seam fastball. Not quite the movement that Arietta possesses, but still started it in a little bit. Travis gave up on it, and it touches that inside corner for the call third. Myers 0 for 3, a couple of ground outs to third, and a fly ball to left on a broken bat. Two on, one out, home half of the ninth. Padres need five here. Down five nothing to the Cubs. Second major league game for the 26 year old Pena. Dominican Republic. Result of a lot of uh, determined work, Pena. He was a not on the 40-man roster in spring training, so he's worked his way up to the big leagues. Big chance to impress. One and zero to Myers. That one fouled back. I would like that just clip you with the catcher, the umpire. Padre fans trying to stir up a big ninth inning. 33,614 here tonight. Another foul back.
Ground ball through the right side. That will send Sardinius around third. Here's the throw to the plate, and it is out as a ball. The umpire almost got taken out by the slide by Sardinius. But what a throw from Hayward in right field. He's always been an outstanding uh, defensive player. I don't think he created a lane. I thought he blocked the plate before he had the ball. Andy Green, as you saw, gave the signal I challenged. They didn't even have to look uh, back in the video room. Here it is again. Boy, pounces on that ball and throws a strike to home plate. Look at he didn't create a lane. No, he, he really didn't. Yeah. But he got his left hand in there, I thought, before the tag. Let's see. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, he yeah. was easily safe. I don't see where he saw out. And even if he had been called out, and not even close. Well, I don't know what plate umpire Lenz saw, but he thought he was out. That shouldn't take any time at all. Right. Padres at least are on the board. Is able to punch one through that right side. And the Padres are on the board five to one. And we're likely to see a Roldis Chapman right now. And there's the signal to the bullpen. They're going to bring in the hard throwing left hander. Madden doesn't want to take any chances. It's five one with two men on. Padres one swing away from really uh, causing that skipper of the Cubs to get a little nervous. And here comes Chapman. They want him to stay on his game. So here's a chance to get the final two outs, and the Padres will have to beat a good one now in the ninth. The leadoff walk by Sardinia and Adam Rosales single and Will Myers single to right field have a run on the board. It's five to one. This is a safe situation for Chapman. He's blown three saves. That's his combined record with the Yankees and the Cubs. With the Cubs, he's 0 and 1. This is his 14th appearance. He's saved seven games. Well, you know, you're for a uh, an election. In election year, uh, yeah, Chicago fans, they want a Rizzo Bryant ticket. Sausage. Ditka. And you know, for Chapman, with as hard as he throws, did you see very few walks from the fireball and left hander? Since 2010, pitches. Of 100 miles an hour or more, no one in his class. I mean, he consistently can hit the century mark. Turn up the dial right here. Solarte hitting right-handed, and a defensive indifference. Myers moves to second base. 
So second and third now for Salarte. Scoreboard 100 on our meter. He's over the speed limit. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> this guy's on the Autobahn. Yeah, they don't care about that there. Takes a little off the fastball. Two and one. Alice at third and Myers at second with one out here in the bottom of the ninth. Slice down into the right field corner, a long run for Hayward. There to make the catch. He almost overran it. Both runners tag. Rosales scores. It's five to two. Sack fly for Salarte, his 53rd RBI of the season. Ball four seamer down and away. Hey, just get the barrel out in front. Hey, let the speed of the pitch do the work. And he gets the run home. Both those runs charged to Pena. Alex Dickerson, a single, a walk, and a strikeout. Facing Arietta, who went eight innings, no runs, two hits, walked three, and struck out six. His game to win, and it would be his 16th. Dickerson trying to keep it going for the Padres here in the last of the ninth. Two outs. 101. Myers standing at third with two gone. 5 2 now the Cubs lead. The Cuban missile. And you can see why. He first came up, just reared back. Everything was a fastball. I said, just wait till he shows you the slider. Oh. Hasn't done that yet tonight. All fastballs. Again at 100. Two and one. And Dickerson get in front of one of those. He could drive it a long way. Inside three and one. Dickerson gets aboard. A tying run would come up. You certainly want to get out of the way of those. Yeah. Ball four. And the tying run indeed walks to the plate. Ryan Schimpf. Slide out, send center fielder Fowler all the way to the wall in center field to capture his bid for extra bases. And was out on a good play made by Baez in the hole between first and second. Shimped with 14 overs. On the home stand against Arizona, extra innings, a three run shot. That's what the Padres need here a three run blast to tie it up. Dickerson at first base they're not holding him on. We'll see if uh, he takes second base on the defensive indifference. Yeah so the Cubs can't go the short way at second base to end this one. One strike to Shimp. Dickerson goes and the bluff throw. So two runs in, two runs in scoring position, five to two Cubs. And a ball and a strike to the powerful little second baseman of the Padres. Only two wild pitches this year for Chapman. Low, two and one.
After Shemp, Christian Bethencourt. On the corner, two and two. That last pitch at 101. Cubs and Padres fans in the crowd of 33,614. That one gets away. Here comes Myers. It's five to three. Well, chalk up another wild pitch. I just mentioned a little bit ago, Chapman. Two wild pitches, now three. But right off the mask of plate umpire Lentz. And carry him over toward the third base dugout. So Myers scores. Dickerson over to third. And the count three and two to Shim. Three runs here in the ninth for the Padres. Foul back. Got a piece of wood on that 101 mile an hour blazer. Right back at you tomorrow at noon here on Fox Sports San Diego. Paul Clemens against Kyle Hendricks. Hope you'll join us. Dickerson at third. Full count to Schimpf. High ball four. The time run is on and the winning run comes to the plate. Back to back walks to Dickerson and Schimpf. So we would suspect is now going to move in on the back of first base. We want to let the, the easy trip to second base for Shimp. And here comes Chris Basio, the pitching coach. So he gave up the sacrifice line to Salarte and then has walked Dickerson and Shimp. Three runs home for the pot race here in the ninth. And they've got the time run at first. Carried by Schimpf and Christian Bethencourt represents the winning run. Well, this is going to be an interesting matchup because we know it started in spring training. Christian Bethencourt loves the fastball. Hey, 95, 101. If he just gets that barrel out in front of it, let the ball do the work, get in a good hitter's position, and see what happens. Of the home runs he allowed, all but one have been by right handed batters. Bethencourt ripped a double into the left field corner. Only the second hit allowed by Arietta. That was back in the eighth inning. Pulls that one foul. What a good pitch to rip at that first pitch there. Rizzo is holding on Chimp. That opens a big hole on the right side. Boy's just reaching back and trying to throw it through a brick wall. He wanted that one down and in. Contreras was down and in. That one leaked up and away. Swing and a miss. Top three, and the Cubs have won it. But the Padres go down fighting with a winning run at the plate. The final tonight Cubs five, Padres three. Here's Mike Pomerantz. Dick, thanks very much. When Clay and I see the Padres live, the post-game show, we'll talk about Jake Arrieta and what he was able to do to get himself back on track as the Cubs push for the playoffs. Also, you'll hear from Andy Green. All that and more coming up in moments.